Okay. So we're going to give everybody time to come into the into the meeting. I think everybody's here. No, this still looks like we're people joining us. So okay, wonderful. I think everybody who's going to join us already is going is here, and I welcome everybody who has joined us this evening. Thank you for for joining. Thank you for listening to what we have to present. We're excited to show you what we what we are about, and we are happy to answer all your questions. I hope that during my presentation um, with slides, I'm able to answer many of your questions. But if you have any more questions, you're welcome at any point in the in, during the course of the, the webinar to type them into the Q&A and you will find the Q&A at the bottom on, along your screen. There are two little speech bubbles there and you are welcome to um, you're welcome to type any questions there and my panel and myself will be happy to answer those for you. But before we start, I would like to introduce you to the people on my team. These are some of the amazing people behind the scenes who make Teneo what Teneo is. So I'm going to start. Um, Linky, would you would you like to tell us who you are and where you where you operate, where you fit in, what you're about, quickly? I always thought you were going to ask where I'm from, so I would have explained that with uh, with like flair, you know, with my surfboard and all of that, but. Good evening, yes. everybody. Um, I'm Linky Palsa. I'm the Sakai School FET phase leader. So I'm part of the day-to-day -day operations from grade 10 to 12 in the Sakai School. And yeah, I'm also actually an English teacher at heart. So um, if there's an opportunity, I would jump at um, getting into a lesson or just to get uh, some of the, 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 the English learner. Well, Afrikaans learners and English is additional just to have a chance to to sit and chat with them. And as you have a question from Afrikaans, I will link you with your answer. Okay, so yeah. okay. Ruby? Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to be here today to share our products and speak about our products. Okay, I am um, the phase head for uh, grades intermediate phase grades four to six. And like Linky, I'm an English teacher. I've taught English for many years. It's my passion. And um, yes, and I love being a Teneo. Thank you, Rubes. We love having you. Dulzon? Good evening, everybody. Lovely to see everyone. Well, even though I can't physically see, I can see in the numbers and that's good. <laughs> Um, I'm also at the intermediate phase. I work with Ruby there. Uh, we, the guardians there for grade four to six, and um, we also busy, we also are responsible for the day-to-day -day management and with the teachers, the parents, the learners. And uh, at heart, I'm a social science teacher, natural science teacher. That is where my passion lies. And I've been at Teneo. I'm practically part of the furniture here. This is my fifth year. Perfect. Kerry? Hi, everyone. It's wonderful to 
be here. So I'm Kerry and I'm involved with the homeschool and the adult matric. And like Dozan, I'm a part of the furniture and like Ruby and Sninky, I'm a part of English as well. English is my favorite subject. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you very much, everybody. Right, so I am, I am going to start with the, um, the deck of slides and we will take you through what Taneo is about. And again, I want to remind you, if you have questions, that's what we're here for. We're all about answering your questions and introducing you to this wonderful space of Taneo and online schooling. Right. There we go. Can you see? Am I on the right? No, you're not screen sharing yet. Not screen. No. Right. There we go. Just waiting for it to. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So, Taneo Online School, what are we all about? We would love to show you. So, welcome to 2023. This is our sixth year of existence and so back in January 2018 we started Teneo Online School a few people and we had a group of, of students and we started something and it's been the most amazing journey of my life as an educator. So we're encouraging you to know that on the 16th of January this year our term one starts for 2023 and we have an, a proven track record of academic success. And I'm sure that your team will know that, uh, that we're a stuck record about academic excellence and about making sure that everything we do, we do to ensure academic success and academic excellence. Every little detail and, um, is important to us. And slowly over the years, we've put in changes. One at a time, we've built this to make sure that we have are able to um, do this successfully. Our internal record speaks for itself, but it's always the external measure that is a real measurement of a school. And that is the grade 12s and the results that our matriculants achieve. So in 2022, um, we had our fourth cohort of matriculants to date and that was our Sakai matriculants, and we also had our first cohort of grade 12 IEB matriculants. We also have had our second, our second cohort of um, AS students in the international curriculum have started their examinations now in January as well. So it's that season, ladies, isn't it? We wait for our 2022 metric results with bated breath. We we trust and we know that we put everything into those metrics and that they are going to do themselves proud and that they are going to make us um, proud of them as well. So if we look back on our 2021 SACI metric results, in about two weeks' time, we're going to be very proudly talking about our 2022 SACI metric results. And we are very proud to say that 35% of the Sakai distinctions in South Africa were achieved by Teneo students. The top scoring South African matric for Sakai was a Teneo student. And she is successfully studying at Honestapuert and fulfilling her lifelong passion of becoming a veterinarian. And she is just one of many of our very successful matrics. All right. So the um, I want to show you something here where 
Alia is going to tell you more about Tanea Online School. And she is um, okay. I'm going to switch because a picture and a video tells you a thousand speaks for a thousand words. All right. Is that sharing the right screen now? Okay. Let's hear what Alia has to say. Hi, I'm Alia. Come on in. Oh, wipe your feet on your way in or my mom will freak. This is my family, my big brother Noah. He's in final year. And my mom and my dad. Wish me luck. Bye, dad. Alia, finish your oats. You're going to be late for school. Okay, mom. I'll see you guys later. It's time to get to school. And you better hurry or we're going to be late. Enjoy school, Noah. You too. Luckily, school is right through here. Welcome to my school, Tineo. Confused? Don't be. It's school exactly as you know it. Just from the comfort of my own house. Let me show you how it works. All I have to do is set up a computer, log in, and boom, I'm in class with all my friends and the best teacher in the whole world, Mr. Kaya. Hey, Mr. K. Morning, Alia. Morning, class. <sighs> okay, class. Is the following number odd or even? Yes, Alia? Even. And it is even the number of teachers we have currently teaching thousands of students across multiple schooling options. That's right. Teneo offers the South African curriculum examined through either Sakai or the IEB, or the British International Curriculum accredited through Pearson Edexcel. I'll see you guys later. Time to learn. Learning from home means that my parents are a big part of my education. Luckily, with Teneo, they know exactly how, when, and what I'm learning. My mom and dad can log in at any time and from anywhere to make sure that my bro and I are attending class, what our grades are looking like, if we have any tests or exams coming up, and to chat to our teachers. Great work today, class. Why don't you take what we've learned and tackle these questions on your own? Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 See you all tomorrow. Hey, big bro. Shh. Luckily, if Noah gets distracted or misses something, all his classes are recorded, so it's super easy to catch up. I want to be just like Noah, who's going to join yet another successful year of matriculants from Teneo. Did I mention, Noah got accepted to studying engineering overseas, hashtag proud. You see, Teneo follows globally accepted school curriculums, so we can do anything our heart desires. One day I want to be a doctor or a dancer. I haven't decided yet. So that's my school, Teneo. It's school, but just here, and I love it. Thanks for coming, I'm off to dance class, bye. Teneo is a highly structured online school environment, powered by world-class technology that gives students access to high quality education through real teachers in live interactive classes. Teneo is the superior alternative to bricks and mortar schooling, getting our students future fit for the lives they want and deserve. Visit TineoSchool.coza for more. Tineo, Africa's number one online school. Perfect. New Peridon Tax toothpaste. It's four times more effective so, at removing oh. the main cause of bleeding gums. New Peridon Tax toothpaste. So, Alia, I hope you become a doctor and a dancer all at the same time. So, there are no limits to what our children can achieve. So what makes Teneo different? There are a number of things we believe in real-time live classes um, that come to you from the comfort of home, the safety of home. And we have a strong balanced, balance between teacher-led and student-centered. So what does that actually mean? Um, we can bandy that around. We can say this is teacher-led or student-centered, but what do we mean by that? Well, the balance is teachers, qualified, SACE registered, passionate, experienced teachers who, who know what they're doing, who are there to facilitate and direct the learning that our students are, are involved in. But it's not all about what the teacher wants to do, because the teacher has to be aware of what the students need and what they are, where they're discovering, what they they, the pathway that they are going down. 
And so there has to be that balance of students discovering the content in a meaningful way and the teacher directing them to that. And so it's that balance that we constantly try to achieve. Our classes are taught by qualified teachers. We, we are sticklers about that. People must be qualified and properly uh, professionally registered to teach at Teneo. And another important part of, besides the teaching and learning, is always the assessments and how those assessments are done. Um, our tests and examinations are all set and marked by qualified teachers. And that's really important in terms of quality control, in terms of setting the right standards and of slowly but surely preparing the children for the grade 12 examinations, which are external examinations. It means that, that the end result there is, is outside of our control and that's the ultimate test, isn't it? So um, at Teneo, we have an expanded offering from 2023. We have the real-time flex or the real-time plus school formats. And these, we hope, are going to allow children the option and the choice of, of taking um, their schooling in a, in a way that, that suits them. And it's also about suiting your, the parents' budget and what the parents want in, in that space. We also have a very strong emphasis on the idea of social interaction. Children cannot be isolated from um, society. They need to be able to mix with their peers. And our live classrooms are an opportunity for that, as well as the learning. The, the classrooms um, and the interaction between the students is, is lively, it's healthy, and it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's just the same as any other classroom, whether it's a physical classroom or an online classroom. I, when I have taught in online spaces, I have experienced just as much fun with my students and, and learning with my students as I might have had in a physical space. And that's important because it's that social interaction. I uh, don't know, ladies, if you would like to comment on that as well in terms of your experience of how students engage with, with each other and with the teacher, because learning is a social activity and it's something that we engage in. I don't know if you have any comments you'd like to, to, to make on that one. No, Ruby? Yes. Um... <laughs> I, with the with the interaction with the students and the teacher, it's it's a very our lessons are very very interactive, and uh, and they students are given the opportunity to socialize with each other whilst they're in class, and also when when teachers do group work, they put into uh, breakout rooms where they can um, further interact with each other. For us. The social component is very, very important, and therefore our lessons are very, um, are highly interactive. And furthermore, we have extramurals that, uh, which further uh, assist in um, getting students together and sort of um, building on the social component. Yeah. Sorry, Jackie, you Thanks, muted. Ruby. Thank you, Ruby. That's why that bottom um, line is really important. We take our education seriously, but we have fun doing it. Okay. Right. So from grade R to nine, we have in English an Afrikaans medium, so our language of, of instruction. We have an Afrikaans medium school and we have an English medium school. And the schools follow what we call is an IB aligned approach. So what does that mean? I can just quickly unpack that for you. From grade R to nine in the general education and training phase, a school's job, it's our function and our purpose there is to prepare our students for their final, you know, the, the, the further education and training phase, which is from grade 10, 11, and 12. So our, our goal here is to give the students every opportunity to grow, to develop, to discover what their strengths are, what their passions are, 
what subjects they enjoy, how they enjoy it. At the same time as we are equipping them with the skills to, to grow and to, to develop. So the IEB aligned approach is what we, we have taken on. And I, I know that the next question is what, what or who is the IEB? So the IEB is a South African examination board for grade 10, 11, and 12. And it stands for the Independent Examination Board. It used to be, many years ago, it was called the Joint Matriculation Board. So it has a long history in South African education. And I think that if I were to distill what the IEB stands for, is they believe in critical thinking, developing critical thinking. They don't believe in just, you don't want your children just mindfully learning things that they parrot and process. You want them actually engaging with the content that they are learning so that they emerge able to use the knowledge and the skills that they have. And developing critical thinking takes it through that space of getting them to, to process what they know and to eventually go, well, this is what I think and this is why I think that. And they can then analyze what they know and move through those levels of knowledge and understanding to the beyond comprehension to be able to ultimately create with the knowledge that they have. And increasingly, the world that our children are going to move into demands that they have the ability to think critically, that, it's, that they are going to have that facility to, to process the knowledge. And this is where we want to start with it. So that by the time they reach grade 10, when they make their subject choice at the end of grade nine, they're able to choose an examination board. They're able to choose the subjects they want to do. And they have a better idea of who they are in, in that process of choosing what they, um, they are going to do. So they are going to, from grade 10 onwards, they will be making their choice of the National Senior Certificate in order to achieve their matric. All right, so our grade R to nines, that is our focus, and that's what we are doing in that space, all right? And then we move to grade 10 to 12. So students can remain with the SACI examination board and complete their national senior certificate through SACI. So the national senior certificate is the official name for the South African qualification, a certificate that they get when they finish the South African curriculum. Or they can transfer to the IEB examination board and complete the NSC through the independent examination board. It might seem a bit confusing, but I want to reassure you, I just want to summarize that and say SACI and the IEB are South African examination boards that are fully accredited with Omalusi and they are accredited and permitted to examine the South African curriculum and the, cert the cert certificate that children achieve at the end of that is called the NAC, which stands for the National Senior Certificate. Okay, and we hope that by the time our children get to grade 10, they have a solid foundation from their, their um, senior phase years and that they can then move into these years confidently and able to eventually write their grade 12 exams and achieve what they need to, to do. Right. So moving through, it's your choice because many people ask the diff what's the difference between the South African curriculum and the British international curriculum? So they're both, they, 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 they have different for a different focus and a different way in which it's assessed. We are accredited with Pearson Edexcel, which is one of the examination boards that is accredited. It's an international um, uh, examination board, and they are accredited to examine the British international curriculum. The South African curriculum are the two examination boards that we have um, represented at Teneo are the, the SACI curriculum and the IEB. So they take the South African curriculum they structure it, they have a focus, and they examine it. There is a third South African 
Examination Board. It's called the Department of Basic Education, and they are the third examination board accredited with MOUC. So that if that helps you understand the South African space. Now, it's your choice. Children who do the South African curriculum and do well are still able to study at an international university. And children who complete the British international curriculum can study at international universities if they achieve the right results. They can also have their qualification transferred, um, have it um, the equivalent in South African um, terms that goes through SACWA, and they are then able to apply for South African universities. So either of these curricula is, is available, and it does actually depend on, the, on your child and on finding the right mix for your child, the right place for your child, and a place that they will thrive on their learning journey. So will your child get a matric certificate? Yes, they will, if they pass and they meet all the requirements for their matric. And you are able to choose from three examination boards in South Africa. Now the IEB and SACI, the certificate is the same certificate that gets issued because the certificates in South Africa are issued by Omalusi who is the governing body for the South African uh, curriculum. The Pearson Ed Excel, children who write that, will be issued with their results by, by Pearson. And if they want to apply at a South African university, the conversion through SACWA is, is done. That's South African Quality Assurance. So they, they are the body that, that you present your certificate to and they will give you an equivalent that measures with the South African curriculum. All right, so um, the proof of that is that when you achieve a matric exemption or what's known as a bachelor's pass, whether you're in any of those examination bodies, that you are then permitted to study at a tertiary institution. I do want to just put a little, a little wider into that to say you do need to check that your subject choices are setting you up for acceptance at a, your university of choice. All right. So you do need to make those that type of um, investigation. And we know that we have Teneo alumni at South Africa, at top South African universities. We have students at UCT, they are at Tux, Northwest University, and there's some at Bloom, and certainly at Honest to Port, which is the veterinary um, branch. Okay, so be assured that our students are right up there with any other school in South Africa, as far as setting up our, our students for success. So earlier on, I referred to our expanded offering. What is real-time flex then? So with the, the possibilities that online learning brings to us, you heard Alia speak about the recordings. Many students increasingly don't want to be don't want to be locked into a timetable. They don't want that rigid structure that they have to follow. They want more flexibility to their learning. And real-time flex allows the student to use pre-recorded content that allows them more time to work at their own pace in their own time and to structure their day the way they want to do it. Real-time flex does have some live teacher content because, again, we do believe that a teacher who's qualified and is directing the learning is an important part of this. And allowing students just they, to they, left to their own devices is not actually ideal in some instances. Real-time flex will offer your child the opportunity to, to, to follow the, the learning path that they want to from week to week and still have access to teachers to ask the questions that they need to, and they still have access to teachers who are helping them direct the process of their learning. And Real-Time Flex also offers the parents a, a different price point to the Real-Time Plus. Right. So what then is Real-Time Plus versus Flex? So remember, Real-Time Plus does have teacher, teacher access. Real-Time Plus, is the full service offering that the child, this is for the child who prefers to be in class 
with the teacher, if you prefer it to be structured, you prefer every lesson to be delivered and then, so it's the traditional structure of a school and it's done online. And the difference then between real time flex and plus is the amount of teacher time that a student is given access to. But with real time plus, they get more time in live lessons with teachers. At the end of the day, what's the same between the two is that the students will write exactly the same tests, exams, assignments. They, everything else will be exactly the same. They are just preparing for those assessments in a different way. More live teachers or live lessons or with more re recorded and that, that access to teachers when they feel that they want to. In both instances, the recordings are always available of the live lessons and of the pre-recorded content. And that's all produced by our teachers and that they are experts at creating that content to support your child and in whatever of these two offerings you choose to, to choose for your child. So the key difference between them then is that the one has more teacher access and the one has less teacher live lessons to it. Um, both options then can, the students can email the teachers through the inbox, they get, they, they get the opportunity to ask questions that way. They can ask teachers in the live lessons as well. Right, let's get social. We spoke about this earlier on. We have a number of, of different offerings because it's, it's all well and good. You're always going to have the teachers say in class, all right, guys, let's focus time now to, to get on with the work. But in when they, the, the children are in the social clubs, that's when they don't have to be as, as well behaved. I suppose, well, they need to be well behaved, but the focus can be a little bit more. It's a, less, a lot less formal. Um, chess, um, we have, we even have foundation phase children who play chess and they take it seriously. And we have a chess, our children have started taking part in a chess league. We have a debating team who's really doing very well. So these are, there are offerings between the two. There are free after school clubs and activities for children to participate in. Right. And that just meets the, the, the social need that children need to and, and, I, and I know many of our students have made friends, you know, they've made friends, they very quickly discover who's in the same neighborhood as them, and they link up there. And many of them have met children from other provinces, and they've become fast friends, and the, they might never have met each other, but they consider each other to be their best friends. And all of that happens in this, this type of space. And, and we, we're actively looking at expanding that and, and in introducing a broader variety of things. So our fees start at from 2,199 a month. If you're looking for more information on that, please do go to our website. You can download our information packs for the particular age group that your children are in, for the particular curriculum that you are looking for, and for the particular price point. So, Please go and explore there and discover a whole lot more um, in, in that space. Right. So what must you do next? You mean other than sign up your child to Taneo? Well, how are you going to do that? Please go to our website and then once you get there, download an information pack and the enrollment form is on the website. Please click on that link. And easy peasy, lemon squeezy, you process that and you will enroll your child. Right, are we going, how are we going with questions, peeps? We are answering as you are going through, ma'am. Yes, but and um, think... many of it you have actually covered, Jackie, that's being asked yeah. here. Okay. I think there's also a few questions regarding um, registering with um, with the Department, Department of Education. If maybe you can elaborate on that for us. Oh, yes, very important point and a very um, a, a very topical one. So the 
The registration with the Department of Basic Education is by law, or it was by law, it still is, um, for children up to grade nine, including children who are 15 years old and, and younger. That is starting to change because the Department of Basic Education are working on a framework and on legislation for online schools. So we are ahead of the pack and we are ahead of the laws of the land. And they are, are working on that framework to, to make sure that there is a, there is a structure and that it is, um, it is properly um, regulated. And we certainly support that. We, we do believe that it's important to, um, to stick to the law of the land. We, we support the fact that it does need to be properly regulated. And they have asked us though, to just put on hold any registrations because they don't want to confuse it. They're not, when they, when they reject the offers at the moment, or the, the applications at the moment, it's not because they're saying it's illegal. What they're saying is we don't want to do it yet because we, we want to be very clear that there are students who are homeschooled and then there are students who are aligned with an online school. And they're wanting to make that distinction very clear. Right. So that's the process and the framework, they were working on it last year. They did hope for it to be finished by the end of October. That is not the case yet. Um, so it's in process. If anybody wants more information, you're welcome. We do have a letter that does explain all of that, and we would be happy to share that with you as well. Okay. So until that's official, they are just treading water in that space. Right. So if your child is in grade 10 and 11 and 12, you are accredited with the examination board, whether it's Sakai, IEB, or Pearson. So you don't have to register your child there. They are recognized as accredited with the examination board. Have I answered all the questions that were about? Or have I answered all the points on that? Okay. Um, I think there were some parents as well asking, you know, what to expect on their very first day. They've enrolled, um, they're waiting obviously for their courses, um, very eager and anxious to know how would they know, how would the kids know where to go, when to go, where. So I don't know if you would like to elaborate on that. There's a school Maybe bell. Maybe a, a little bit about the training, Jackie, about the Canvas training. Yes. So the fire um, alarms and the fire drills and you know all of that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, we got to keep you safe. You have to have a, you know an official fire drill every now and then. And no, our safety, our safety is different, isn't it, to a fire drill? Um, our safety is about things like you know a, a safety feature for your children in class is to actually have their camera on with their their name underneath. And um, that just helps the teacher know who your child is so that nobody can pretend to be them with the camera off. Uh, and, can, can we just, sorry, yeah. can we just elaborate on that, 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 you know, what our teachers will not allow learners into class if they do not have the correct yes. name and surname. Yes. yes. So, so those, are, those are definitely fire drills. There, there are version of fire drills. Um, if your child has put an alias on the on the um, on their Zoom and they you know they're calling themselves Trash Panda, they're not going to be allowed into class because they might be playing games. Um, but we're not going to let any Trash Pandas into our classes because we have to look after the children in our class. And um, I also want to say uh, the point about cameras on is you, your child will actually get a better classroom experience. Why? Teachers respond to faces and to, you know, I, I do. I know when I'm teaching, I always look at those visual clues and you know the child that's going, you know, there's a problem. And the child that's going, you know, there's no problem. And, and it just does enhance the child's experience in class. Um, so those are the things to do. But how do you know what to do? So we have a, once you've logged in to, once you receive your, your logins to the learning management system, 
you are then introduced to the, um, there's a, a course that will then take you through all those little details about how do I get to class? What is my dashboard? What is my calendar? How do I discover all of those things? So there's a short course that's prepared for you and you, are, you take yourself through that. It monitors what you've done. And very soon, Monday, 16th of January, if you've done everything to enroll your child, you will be in class. Okay, and it might, I also want to say, give yourself a little, give yourself a little bit of space. The first day or two, don't allow yourself to get too anxious. Um, we are going to start teaching on the 16th. We are going to, to look, but give yourself the this, the this space to um, to make a mistake or two, or to discover it, or to get into the routine. And there's always somebody to help. There's always a way to reach out and to find it. All right. But I also want to say that the more anxious you get, the more it will, it, the less you will take in. So just in your stride, it very soon you you will find your way around, and it's it's really. It's really simple. Okay. Also, Jackie, on the 16th, um, each subject teacher will help the learners to navigate the platform. They will show them where to find what needs to be done. So um, our teachers are very, very helpful. And learners should feel free to, to ask the questions. And I just mm -hmm. want to go back to the point of the cameras. That's also a security, one of our security reasons where we also have the name, where the child comes in with the name and then the, 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 the teacher can also make this connection with the child and we're having the camera on as well as we all learn through different senses. So with, with the camera being on, all our senses are activated. So therefore, for the full learning experience, it's highly advisable and recommended that the camera is kept on. Yes, for the, for the duration of the lesson, yes. Mm. And parents can support us in that too. And I know, I know that that's a challenge because I did have 2020 lockdown learners that I personally owned and keeping their cameras on was a challenge. But I know as a teacher that that is, that is really important. All right. But as to, to finding your way around um, Canvas, the learning management system, um, it very quickly, they very quickly learn their way around and know what to do. And, you know, Dozan and Ruby's grade fours give our grade 12s a run for their money, don't they, Linky? Um, yes, that is, that is true. It seems <laughs> the older they get, the, the more shy they get. Or so we say yes. camera shy when it comes to school, not camera shy when it comes to social media. But and, but, um, but also things like on a lock and submitting assignments yes. and submitting exams and that type of thing. Mm. Oh, they, no. they, they really are so conscientious and um and, and knowledgeable and they and they pick it up just like that. You just have to explain and and they know. Um, Yes, and we've had grade fours and grade sixes come into the, the, the exam connect with a technical problem and tell the tech person, well, you know, I actually have an, a problem with my operating system and I've tried to do blah, 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 and I've done this and it doesn't seem to work. Can you help me, please? And, you know, so the, these are grade sixes and we, there was a time we thought the older a child was, the more they know. It's not that our grade twelves are, are clueless, I sometimes think they choose to be, but um, it's it's if the grade R's and the grade fours um, can find their way around, it that's what it's designed to do. We we design it at that point so that the user experience is intuit, intuitive. That even the, the little guys know how to find their way around, and if that if they can, then the older children can. Do I think. That too. It, it really depends also on the assistance they get in the first couple of weeks that they start school to give them that, you know, it's okay. I If I make a mistake, it is okay. Um, there is somebody to help me. And I think it's very important for parents just to realize that don't do it for them. It's okay if they struggle and if it's a battle in the beginning, rather let them battle through it and become independent by doing it. 
And that way it will make le learning so much more enjoyable for the learner itself. If they can yeah. do things themselves and they don't have to wait for mommy to come and do something for them. They, they don't have to wait for mommy to, to come scan something. Um, they get that sense of independence and they're very proud of doing things themselves. So just, mm -hmm. just bite on your teeth. It's, it's, it, it, I know, but it's worth, it's worth sitting it out for the first week or two um, yes. and just allow them to make those mistakes. And it's okay. And remember, yeah. everything's recorded. So, so if you've missed it, you learn how to use a recording. That's the that's the advantage. The advantage of we, we learn we learn from mistakes. Yes, and uh, and I also think we are so transparent, Jackie. Whatever mm -hmm. we do is out there for everybody to see. Well, so, you know, on that point too, Ruby, the most. The most successful parents at Teneo are the ones who have a parent observer login. So look out for the information on that. We will be sending out information. There is a video that's, that's created for you. Pair yourself with your child. You saw Alia's mom looking at the phone. She was in the supermarket and she could look at her phone and she could see what, what Alia was up to and she could see what lesson she was, she was in. It, you can set the settings to the level that you want in terms of the notifications, but it gives you a 365, 24-7 insight into your child's learning and to where they are and to what they're doing. And it is such an amazing thing to be able to talk to your child about what they're learning. You know, so what did you learn? What did you read about today? What did you think about it? You know, and how do you feel about that? Those that insight and you're telling your child a lot more. You're placing value on learning and education as a parent by showing that you're interested in what your child is learning. And that parent observer login is invaluable for assisting and just for giving you insights. As soon as the test results are released, it'll send you a notification. And immediately in term one, you're able to gauge where things are at and to, to assist. If something's not been assigned and not been submitted, you can quietly get on to. So tell me, did your geography assignment successfully submit? Um, you know, three days before, you can quietly sort of mention that you, 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 you know, your history assignment, how's that going? Do you need anything for it? You know, do you, do you need any help? Or do you need any books? Is there any research that you've got to do? Those, those sort of details are subtle ways, maybe not so subtle ways of saying, I know you've got an assignment due on Wednesday and what are you doing about it? You know, so, so that type of insight in an online school is, is, is also expanded because the new analytics gives you an, an insight into what's going on ahead of the time and it's data driven. So you're, you, you can't argue with it. And it's it's measuring your child's progress academically as well. And you able to see that as it's going down, as it's happening, um, you have those insights into, into what's going on there. And then just as far as the Canvas learning as well, I do want to say that you will find on once you look at the Canvas calendar, twice a week, we have what's called a connect lesson. Right. So connect is a twice a week session and I really want you to encourage your children to be there because that's when we will be doing the finer detail of the Canvas learning um, with the teacher. So they'll be taught those little details that just give them that edge because you know, in a, under test conditions and the exam conditions, you don't want to be learning how to submit the PDF and how to scan it. You need to know how that happens way beforehand out of that sort of the test situation that where it can be anxiety uh, causing. And all of those details are going to be done during the Connect lessons. The, the Tuesday Connect lesson um, is going to be um, focused on Canvas, on um, technical assistance, slowly building up the children's ability there. But it's also going to have a bit of a social uh, aspect, allow the children to just kick back a little bit and engage with each other with a teacher present so that it's monitored and that it's, it's safe. 
And then the Thursday Connect is the more life orientation lesson, the focus there with their, their, their Connect teacher. So that Canvas training is not all done right at the beginning. We slowly let them learn what to do and then slowly as they need it, as, as it becomes appropriate, that as soon as assignments need to start being uh, submitted, before that happens, we will start teaching them what they have to do in that space and how to get on with it and to do it. Okay, and then as we get to the next part of it, we will we will teach them those things. Okay, so Jackie, um, yes, Ruth. there are some um, concerns about Sakai and IEP. Some parents feel that um, the IEP is a little bit too difficult for their students. Uh, for their okay. child so would you uh, maybe elaborate a little but before you Absolutely. elaborate on that I just want to emphasize how important it is to for parents to work in close partnership with teachers and for that 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 log login details is so vital so that because remember our goal is so the child gets the best education and we cannot do it alone. We, we need parent support yes. as well. Yes. Your child so, needs your parent, the parent yes, support. Absolutely. support. Definitely, definitely. Um, like, yes, there, so, are, yeah, there are those yes. concerns. Sorry, sorry, Linky, tell me. No, no, so the, with regards to concerns, we also have a couple of parents asking about load shedding. What will happen <laughs> if a class is disrupted by load shedding? Um, and also the exam process, how it's written and what to do during load shedding and their writing exams. Okay, what's load shedding? Hmm, no. don't know. What country are you from? <laughs> um, so, so can I answer the IB question first? And, and you're welcome to, to help here, ladies. Um, but the, and I do know that there is a perception that the IB is more difficult and more challenging. Um, certainly grade 10, 11, and 12, it can be. But remember that up to grade nine, what we're doing there is it's an IB aligned. So what we're trying to do is create a balanced look at preparing our children. We don't want to, we definitely don't want to disadvantage any students because we're setting the stand too high and children, you know, won't be able to achieve that. That's not the goal at all. Um, we we want to make it a balanced um, um, a balanced approach, and certainly the IB has um, has got more support structures in place for us as a school in the the earlier space, and I, and I think that that's the those are the resources we also want to draw on more. Um, but I really want to assure you that because it's IB aligned, we're not making it more difficult. Right, we're not trying to we're not trying to make children fail and, and do that. We, we want to do everything we can to empower them and encourage them. All right. So I really would would say that, that your 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 um your concerns are there. We we acknowledge that, but we are definitely not not trying to set a standard that's impossible to achieve and that sets children up for failure. And okay. also Jackie, I think the IEB just gives the, the CAPS curriculum a little bit of an edge in terms of the critical thinking. I mean, mm. and also in terms of content, I mean, children don't need more content. They can just mm. put, if they want to know what, if this, why is the sky blue, they can put it in a myriad of um, mm. uh, sources or platforms and then they'll come up with a number of answers. What they need is skills. And that is what the IEB focuses on, that you can take anything and you can apply it to daily life. Yes, I think that's, yes. um, yeah, and I think that's the edge that the IEB gives to the curriculum. So it's not difficult. It is not yes. difficult. And some of the questions you were posing, why, uh, when, when you ask your children, you were sort of uh, encouraging parents to ask why, how, uh, mm. what if. So those are all, yes, those are all critical thinking kind of questions. It makes the, the children think so they can come into their own. So I think it's it's not difficult. It's just, it just announces our curriculum. Yes. And it's not about being 100% right, is it? It's about, it's about saying, 
this is what I think and this is why I think it and this is what I know and that's why I think what I know and 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 to to formulate that sort of sort of knowledge nothing argue, new to argue your created, point yes nothing new was ever created because somebody said that's the way it's always been done and that's the way I have to do it um innovation doesn't happen in that space and the world that that our children are moving into demands that it doesn't ask for it it demands it and that's why that structure but I also want to come back and say, you know, the, the South African curriculum is has received a lot of bad press and it gets, you know, it's 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 often it's often perceived as less than. I want to say that no matter what curriculum you take on this in the world, you teach it well or you teach it badly. You can take one of the best, the top curriculum in the world, and you can teach it badly, you can deliver it badly, and you can assess it poorly. And you're not doing the children any favors. And the, the, the amazing part about the South African curriculum is that it is structured in a way that this is the part that I'm I, I'm very proud of it. And I but I also value the international curriculum. So while I'm saying that, you know, it, it's not to say that one is better than the other. It's about what the child is going to get from the curriculum. But the South African curriculum is designed in such a way. That a school that is that is previously disadvantaged, where there are teachers that are still being empowered to teach properly, can take the curriculum and they are supported in delivering that curriculum and it's it's there for them and in those sort of schools. But it can also be taken by schools that are, are advantaged and taken and delivered in a way that, that meets the needs of the children in those particular schools. And at the, the end of the day, the children write the same to the same levels because they are measured by Umalusi. And there's many occasions when a child who's been at a, at a disadvantaged school has achieved better than children from advantaged schools. The difference with the IEB is that they take that curriculum, they're allowed to structure it in, in a different way, and they're allowed to assess it so that critical thinking is part of that, that that problem solving is part of that, that the analysis is, is part of that. Um, your child's not learning anything if they're just parroting answers and, and regurgitating. You might as well buy a photostat machine and, and just get that. Because you, know, you can take Einstein's theory of relativity and put it through a photostat machine and photostat it 2,000 times and copy it. And at the end of that, the photostat machine will still not be able to solve that equation. And that's the equivalent of children just memorizing content. But when they can actually process it because they've understood it, and they then actually move through those levels of knowledge to go, because I know this, then that must be possible. And if that's possible, then what about this? So they, they're moving through those levels of thinking and knowledge. Um, and that's really important. And maybe but, one of these children is going to come up with the solution to load shedding. Uh, we're on the yeah. same wavelength there. That's what I was <laughs> just going to say. We, we're developing independent thinkers and... Uh, so problem solvers, the problem solvers <laughs> and 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 maybe somebody will come up with an answer to our load shedding wouldn't it be amazing if that were a Teneo student and you know, i always say uh, this that amongst all our students we've got the greta thunbergs and we've got the malalas of the world in our ranks amongst our kids and absolutely. it's time they stepped up and became what they need to to do south africa needs them the world needs them and um, the solutions only become possible because people and children have been allowed to think for themselves and encouraged to, to do that. You know, so that for me is, is also part of education and, and why we do, we do what we, we, we do. Um, that's, that's the passion for it. Because, you, you know, and a place like South Africa um, needs innovative thinkers. Um, we have problems that need to be solved. In a and country also, where there are no problems to be solved, it's pretty boring, isn't it? Because there's no innovation required. And and that's, that's again, so load shedding. Yes, we know. But we, we have all 
come through it. Um, I started this webinar and I was in load shedding. You might have noticed, you might not have noticed. And we all have backups for our backups and that's where we get to. But some really core questions to that. Um, there are simple backups that you can get to keep your modem, keep your router going. The UPS, they're increasingly, they're becoming more efficient and they're becoming more cost effective to keep the router going, especially during an exam time, during a test time when you need that continuity. Um, we all become obsessive about keeping our devices charged, don't you? That's like top priority. And we, we have backups for that. Um, we, we do have a way to support our students in the event. So during exam time, so during tests and exam time, we have what we call an exam connect. And that is, it's a standing Zoom link meeting. And you immediately go to that if you hit a problem. You can join it. It's a Zoom meeting. You can join on your phone. That's why during exam time, keep a phone charged, have the link that is saved, that you've, you've bookmarked it so that you know where it is. And you come in on the Zoom and you can say, I've got a problem, whatever that problem might be. There's a technical team there always on standby to support you. The teachers are there to support you for that particular exam. If you have no problems, you keep on writing. Okay, so um, people have inverters. Um, many of our parents go, well, I'm not paying school uniform and I'm not paying the same commuting, you know, petrol prices. And they invest in things like inverters and backup sources and power supplies to, to solve that. If something really does go wrong, then the, the recordings are there and we do understand that it does happen. Um, we, we, we do understand that and we don't want to make that something that disadvantages a child. All right. Um, the other thing that I want to say there is that all our teachers are required to have a backup. They have, are required they they cannot use load shedding as a reason for missing a lesson. They have backups, they have backups for their backups, and increasingly that is, is proving they just carry on and they, they keep teaching. Um, that's a requirement, all right? Um, and our teachers know that. And only in rare circumstances where there's been something beyond, totally beyond their control, do they do they then we still have the recording backup for that? Okay. So we're going to beat load shedding. We're going to do that. Okay. And, and the great, great thing about our uh, sorry, Linky, the great sorry, thing about our, uh, the recordings, uh, I think parents should know this yeah. is once, I mean, if a child is studying for an exam and they can't, uh, and the concept was taught in, in, in the first term. So the child can go back and look at the recording and get the whole explanation from the end. Sort of, uh, it, it, it just refreshes the child's mind. And if they do happen to miss a lesson, like there was a question in the chat there, what happens then? Then you, the child can catch up. It's, it's no, there's a teacher there, live lessons. A live lesson is taking place. The concept is being explained. So the child is not missing out. Yes. Sorry, Linky. No, Link's no, 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 that was what I wanted to add to as well. That even though, because as Jackie said, we've got backups for our backups, but sometimes when stage six, you know, kicks in, the backup and the other backup hasn't charged as much. But if there's really something like, if that happens, then the teachers still do a recording of the lesson if they weren't able to teach that lesson. So. At any point in time, those scheduled lessons will either happen or if something extreme happened, there will be a recording. So your child will not miss out on any education. You know, we have students, by the way, um, we have students who are they're professional sports people and they are in, involved in cultural activities that demand a lot of rehearsal time they are Teneo students and they deliberately join us because of the recordings. And that means that they can go to rehearsals or they can, you know, they can be flying from one continent, continent to the other. Um, 
and while they're in transit, they know that they can then catch up with the recordings once their rehearsal time is over or once their practice session is over in the, in the cricket nets or on the tennis court. And they deliberately use the recordings. So it's not an advantage. In, in fact, we, we, actively, we actively try to be positive about it. It's an opportunity to keep going. I've taught a lesson on my phone because that's where I had battery. I know. I've seen some teachers who go to their car and switch on their car and keep it, but they keep their phone going and teach from their car because they are determined that their lesson mm. is going to happen. And the people who stole the cables in their neighborhood are not going to beat them. You know, so that's the approach that we that we um, take. It's not going to beat us. Okay, have we missed anything? Does anybody have something they still want to say? No, there's it's just something that I'm... Oh, you. sorry, Dr. Okay. Dawn. We so are all this question is from, from Lotta um, regarding parent involvement, um, homework, what is our policy regarding homework, and how much parent involvement do are we referring to? And, and can a full-time, a parent is working full-time, um, how will they be able to assist them um, if they are working full time, because we spoke about assisting the learners, especially the first couple of weeks, maybe. So, yeah. Okay. I think it's going to depend as uh, definitely for foundation based children. One of the prerequisites is that there's an adult who assists the child. All right. We cannot expect the grade R's to threes and even some of the grade fours to to be able to to do what they need to do at that level they do need adult um an adult who's there to to help them um especially when they're making pizza and they need to use the oven we can't expect the children to do that by themselves the level of parent involvement um you know it's about it's about slowly teaching your child that independence to take ownership of their learning and too much involvement from the parent can be just as damaging as too little. So it doesn't mean you have to sit next to your child 24 seven during every lesson to make sure that they are there. Um, but it's certainly instilling in them that sense of the value of being in class and being on time of doing the work. Um, the, within the learning management system, it's very easy to see a to-do list. And if you have a parent observer login, you're able to do it um, remotely. You can follow up and see if your child did attend the lesson and, and that keeps them honest. And you can certainly inquire from, if you have some suspicions, um, you can certainly contact us and meet with the teachers and the grade leaders and find out how, how that works. Um, so the, the parental, parental involvement um, is necessary even if your child is not at Tenera. I honestly believe it's not something we cannot as parents abdicate all responsibility for our children's education to a school. We all have to be involved at some level. Um, if you set up a structure that your child works in that supports your child, you're setting them up for success. There are some people who use learning centers during the day. Um, their children take their laptop and they go and they study at a learning center. That just helps the parent facilitate that space, know that the child is in a safe space and is being supported. Right. Um, but, you know, it's about teaching the habits. And it's a documented fact that children who have learned at home in, in, a, in, you know, in a home environment have learned more responsibility ultimately. They are more independent in what they do and how they submit things. Right. So, we also have weekly plans inside each subject. We supply you with a weekly guide to what has to be covered for each subject. Um, there's a calendar for when SBA tasks are due. So all of that can be put on the fridge and you can, you know, it's public, it's out there. It's part of you as a parent supporting your child. Are there other ways that you know that parents support their children? Um, because we all we all have to work too. I know that. Um, so it's yeah, it's it's about it's about setting it up. Don't allow your child. You know, so one here's one. Don't allow them to learn in their bedroom behind a closed door because that's starting something that's not going to work. 
um, but you also need them in a space where they are they can focus and not be not be distracted by too much Good. but you know no. make sure that their screen is visible to you if you happen to walk past or look at them from the distance you know that type but of yeah also think that um it doesn't matter it's homeschooling, but you need to create a structured environment at home. And like you said, the bedroom is not the options. That, that's where you sleep. So create a structured environment in the house, a quiet space where the child can concentrate. And also that the child knows that um, eight o'clock must uh, I start and here's my desk and and the child can get into a bit of a routine. This is my space. This is my learning space. That's my sleeping space. So it's important to create the, the that differentiation in the home because it's, since it's uh, and, and to stick to online. to stick to the routine of also getting up, yes. getting dressed, brush your teeth, brush your hair, having your breakfast, getting ready for school. Even though it's at a desk in your home, that you get in that habit that you have to you have to gear up your mind now is school time. So I'm not lying in my bed with my pajamas and stretching and munching my mm, Rice Krispies and, and whatever, because um, that, is, that is obviously not the right way uh, because they're not paying attention. Um, it's, actually, it's actually a waste of time. So actually that they still in the habit of this school and like you would go to a brick and mortar school, you get up at a certain time, you get ready, you eat your breakfast, you make sure you have your books, your pencils, everything that you need next to you um, so that you can start the day. I think this is where parents can help us in creating the, the, the correct mindset, instilling this right. mindset that this is school and this is what we, we're going to be doing. And it just assists the teachers. So when they come into class, they're ready, they're all fired up, they know it's school. Definitely. Um, Sorry, I, I, I've picked up a, a thread here and I don't think anybody has um, answered Mr. Sh I don't know if it's a Mr. or Mrs. Shiraz, who is very concerned um, about um, our teachers being qualified enough to identify if a learner has some learning um, difficulties. Um, do we do remediation? Um, are we only geared for the very gifted and talented um, learners with um, moving over to IB? I'm not sure what grade um, this, this learner might be or, or this parent might be. Um, so yeah, if we can maybe just put that we are definitely not just, not just an academically school and, and we're not catering only for the most gifted, we are catering for all our learners with all kinds we of different consider things. every one of our children gifted but obviously we, we have limited well being an online school um re remedial is 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 limited very limited yes. and however however if your child is you we 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 are able to support children who who need concessions um there are a variety of concessions that you can apply for um if your child needs extra time if they have if they have some challenges with reading, um, if they have any of those sort of space, those kind of challenges to their learning, um, those concessions, you apply for the concession and you, you do that properly and it gets logged and we make sure that extra time is added to the tests, that the child is supported in, in those ways as well. Um, we have many children who have a, a variety of things. And, and I think one of the most common is a child who's got who's been diagnosed with ADHD, and they they actually thrive at Tenere, especially if they have headphones on and they're sitting in front of a screen because they're not in a classroom where every little you know and that's the problem with an attention deficit is that the slightest activity outside of of, of the the actual learning space is what, what put draws them away. So when they have noise cancelling if ear, ear sets on, they are focused and they run because they, they, they're working in the front row. They're sitting in the front row of the class and the teacher can, can see that. So those, those type of children are definitely um, welcome and they definitely have a place here. And we, we are not only about... Um, pure academic achievement and A's, um, we celebrate children who get, who, 
you know, a child who moves from 40% to 45% deserves as much celebration and as much praise as a child who moves from 90% to 95%. Um, in, in fact, a child who achieves 40 to 45% sometimes has, has overcome more challenges in, in that achievement. And, and that's why celebrate your children for who they are and the celebration of, of what they can achieve and what they are doing. And don't compare your child with other people. You have an individual. Yes. Okay, this has been really exciting. Have we answered most of the threads? Oh, who's running through? I think there's about 40 odd um, of maybe trying to just quickly um, run through. Um, I think there's quite a, there was quite a oh, few. A, about the enrollment process. Okay. The enrollment yeah. process, people still waiting, feedback, um, they'd be a little bit anxious. And so when will enrollment be open? Um, okay. And payment. I do want to answer Sipokazi. I do want to answer your question. Um, we are still offering the British International Curriculum. We what has changed is that we are offering it from year eight and nine only, um, as a specific focus on the international curriculum, because that's when we are going to be getting them ready to do the IGCSE and their A levels. Um, the I, I wanted, if, if I may. Um, tell you from personal experience, my sons attended the Department of Basic Education school um, until the end of grade seven. And they, the one has just got his AS results and the other one is getting his IG results very soon. And they went to a school where they started the international curriculum being prepared for it in year eight and nine. And they are doing fine and they're doing well and they are thriving. So again, um, what has changed there is that the international curriculum is now being offered as a real-time flex offering. So there's a, there are more recorded content to it, but it's definitely still being offered. So once your child gets to the end of grade seven, they can definitely move into year eight from that. And again, what we're trying to do with the general education and training is equip our children to make that choice that suits them when they get to their further education and training space. All right, so uh, I hope that that has reassured you and has, has given you, um, right. Um, I'm seeing many people who say they've applied, they've paid a fee and they're waiting on feedback for acceptance. Um, we are processing it as fast as we can. And we will definitely, our goal is to make sure that as many people who have applied on time will get to um will get to um be in class by by Monday. Okay. Um, okay. Um, there was also some uh, parents who's um, wondering whether uh, the textbook should be um, hard copies. Or... I've answered them already, but if you want to answer them live. No, 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 you are most welcome, then that's fine. And there was a few about class sizes, um, Jackie. Yeah. Also for the yeah. higher grades. Yeah, for the grade 11s and... Um, in terms of the class sizes. Okay. All right, so it does depend on which offering you have taken. Um, actually, that is a very good question because what I should have said was that the, the real-time flex, the classes are bigger um, and mm. the real-time plus, the classes are smaller. So the um, real-time plus depends on which grade your child is in um, in, in the in the FET SP space, it can be 35 to 40 in a class, um, but it can be less than that. It does depend on the subject that they're also taking as well. All right, but in the flex classes, it can be more are much bigger. That's what parents, some parents doesn't, they, they're not particular about the size of the class. And certainly in an online space, class size doesn't really matter as much. Um, the amount of time they get with the teacher is you know it's not it's taken outside of just asking questions in class because you can ask via the inbox 
you can ask in a variety of ways um, how to, to, to get help from a teacher. Um, physical space, your class sizes are actually very directly linked to the size of classrooms in the old space, you know, that, that more than, uh, my, I used to find that but over 27 kids in a physical class suddenly became different. Um, but that's not, that size doesn't apply as much in an online space anymore. Definitely doesn't. Yes, I think we must just um, like, there's quite a few parents that says they're still waiting um, feedback. So yeah, just reiterating. Okay. All the channels are quite busy. The phones are not being yes, answered. They are. They are. We, are, we are experiencing we are experiencing high volumes at the moment. Um, it often happens in January. I, I want to tell you that your your questions are a priority. We have got a new ticketing system in place, and we have got every single available person on that at dealing with those issues. The applications. Um, I'm I'm making a note, and I will follow up. Anybody who's put a comment in here, I will go and I will follow up and see whether that's a payment. I know that payment links were being sent out tonight as well. Okay. Um, so the, the enrollment process also is speeded up. If you submit the, the relevant documentation, a most recent report and the birth certificate or ID, the sooner we can get that, the, the faster we, we can actually process them. Um, so as soon as you get your end of term last year reports and you submit them and you send them through, the sooner your, your um, application will be approved. Okay. Um, also, um, parents would like to know, uh, can they change if they've um, opted, let's say, for PLUS and they would like to change to Plexi? Um, can they do it at any time or yes, do we they, can, they can apply for it needs a terms notice. So we're going to have, we can only make that change at the start of the term. The um, next term. So you would have to apply for the, the next term ahead of, ahead of and time. Do we turn a child away because we've reached our class limits? Absolutely not. We don't have any walls to, to we, we don't have any of those. Um, we are, unbound in that space. It just means we have to create a new class and get a new teacher. The virtual classroom is not limited in, in that space at all. So you're always guaranteed a place. And I also want to reassure you that that assessment is not an academic assessment of whether you're accepted or not. It is merely a check to see that you've met all the requirements and that your child is in the right grade. We don't like putting children in the wrong grade. It's not good for them. Um, they need to be in an age appropriate grade for their academic journey. And that improvement, you, you, there's another shift that you, you can make there is that we're not assessing them on their academic performance to make sure that they're assessed. We have place for every child. Okay. All right. Um, the information regarding the actual um, contact time for the um, for the flexi learners, has, that information has been sent as soon as they have enrolled. Yes. So the 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 average. So those the averages on the information packs are the, you know that that might be four and a half hours on, on a Tuesday, and it might be four hours on a Wednesday, depending on mm. on the timetable space. But you you also need to remember that 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 the instructional time includes the assignments that children have to do and the work that they, they have to do on that. And that that study time is work that they do in between. So, you know, in a physical school, you might, uh, the teacher might teach you a concept and then after 25 minutes, say, open your books and then the teacher watches you actually do the work. That we don't waste time with that in, in class. Class time is time with the teacher interacting and teaching the child. Um, in the flex space, that's the teacher directing and, and focusing the child on what the reported content has to be. Um, sitting and watching children write an essay is, is something we encourage them to do, plan to do in their, their own time. Okay. 
um, assessments and place also just during the term. Um, we do have test week or exam um, weeks in term two and term four. So, and um, those dates are available at the beginning of, of each term as well. Um, so that parents know in advance when is, um, when is supposed to be study time and when, when they're not supposed to be on the PlayStation. <laughs> yes. Um, Lance, I just want to answer your, uh, I just want to answer your question. Um, the, the connect, which is the Zoom link that you're looking at, um, I think I, I, I want you to check that you have the correct link um, because um, that meeting opens at, and I know it's been open, I've been, I've been in there and I've watched it open, we're opening at half past seven and we're keeping it open till half past um, four or five even at, at the moment. Um, so um, the, and the phone lines are very busy, I do admit we put new extra resources on there to, to try and get it um, answered. Um, so I'm going to, um, I, if, you, if you're comfortable giving me, like in the chat, um, it's private so nobody else can see it. Um, if you want to give me your email and your phone number there, I'm happy to, to take it from there, okay. Um, all right, um, and I'm going to try and get you the link, the correct link. Um, for the for the connect. See if I can send it to you. Um, okay. Jackie, can I just answer a couple of questions that parents have asked about if all assessments are online or if some are being written on a piece of paper. So um, in the FET phase specifically, it, there are certain subjects like maths, for example, and physical science and accounting, where a child will be writing on paper scanning the exam, the answer sheet, and then uploading that sheet to the system or to the platform. All of the other subjects do, um, or the assessment or the test and exam then takes place online. They physically type their answers to the questions on the question paper. So there might be instances, but it does, um, uh, um, it, it, it differs from subject to subject. If it's a practical subject, then it might be necessary to print it out or to, to write it on a piece of paper. But most of the other subjects are online. The assessment takes place online. But, it, but if all, all assessments then is also done with the proctoring system. So whether you're writing on paper yes. or typing, mm. you need the proctoring system on. Yeah. Timed. Sorry, Ruby, you were cut off. Also timed. Yes. It's also it's, timed. Oh, yes. you don't. Yeah, you know, it's not. There's a specific time that our exams open and close. But yes. all of that is available in, in the scopes and also in the exam timetables and test timetables that are sent out. And part of that is also the what we've called the, the Unlock Boot Camp is the, the proctoring system bootcamp. So please look out for that when it comes to the test series and, and the exams that your child does that assessment. It's a mock exam so that they understand how the proctoring system works, that they understand how to upload something, how to scan it, how to upload it, how to type the answer in, et cetera, et cetera. So even though if they're writing, for example, maths and it, they write it on a piece of paper, it's not that you will courier that piece of paper to somewhere. It will be uploaded onto the system by your child. So it'll still happen online, even though they've only taken a piece of paper to write their answers. Okay. Um, Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you for your time. And thank you for this, ladies and gentlemen, on the panel. I've enjoyed this. Um, it's always like it to hang with. It's always good to hang out with teachers and talk teacher stuff. It's our passion. Right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, thank you everybody. Bye-bye.
Bye. Everyone, have Bye. a good evening. Bye. 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 Bye.